All right, in this video, we're going to learn about creating staggered animations using the Framer Motion Animation Library in React. And a staggered animation is kind of like the one we have here, where we see each element animating one after the other in succession. And this is a pretty silly example with these emojis, but I think it'll help us to learn about creating staggered animations by using variants and variant orchestration. So with that being said, let's just dive into our code and see how this works. So let's start out with a simple walkthrough of what we have going on with our component, which I've called stagger here. Now we have a div, a parent div, which is this gray background box. And inside of that parent div, we have a bunch of child divs. And each one of those is being used for one of these emojis. And we're outputting those child divs by mapping through an array of emojis, which I've put in a separate file just because I wanted to keep the main file clean so we could see all of the code at once. But in this emojis array, we have objects. Each one has a unique ID and a face property with the emoji as a string. So back to the main stagger component. Here we're mapping over the emojis. And for each emoji, we're returning a div and outputting emoji.face, which is the emoji. Now, if you're new to Framer Motion, you can see that we're importing motion from Framer Motion, and then we use motion to prepend any HTML or SVG element that we want to become animatable. So we've got our parent motion.div, and then we've got our children motion.divs. And notice that for each of those child elements, we're using React's key prop and assigning that to emoji.id, which is that unique ID from each of the emoji objects. All right, let's now get into what we're really here for, and that's for staggered animations and variants. All right, so on the parent element, check out the variants prop, which is a prop from Framer Motion, and we're assigning variants to variants, which is this object up here. Now, variants represent different states of the animation, and we're accessing those through the initial and animate props from Framer Motion. So here you can see that the initial state of the animation corresponds to the hidden variant, which is here in the variance object. And then the animate state corresponds to the visible variant here in the variance object. And in the hidden state, we're starting with an opacity of zero and fading in to an opacity of one over the course of four seconds, which we have in our transition object. Now, as well, for the child divs, we're also using variants, as you can see here, where we have variants equal child variants. So now the variants for the child divs, these are referring to this child variants object. And notice that it has its own hidden and visible states. And as well here, we're doing an opacity fade in, opacity of zero starting to an opacity of one when it becomes visible. And I've also set a transition for those child elements to have their own duration, a shorter duration of 0.5 or 500 milliseconds. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that only the parent div has the initial and animate props. And you can see that initial is assigned to hidden, as we said, and animate is assigned to visible. The child divs, on the other hand, don't have initial or animate props on them. And they don't need to because we've established this parent-child relationship so that now the parent div kind of acts like a conductor and manages changing the initial state to hidden and the animated state to visible. And because we have those corresponding labels in the child variants, these child divs will be synchronized or coordinated with the change of state driven by the parent div. And the reason that's cool is that now in the parent variants, that opens up some new properties that we can add in the transition object. And one of those is called stagger children. And for stagger children, we can set the amount of time that we want each of those child divs to be staggered by. So let's just do 500 milliseconds or 0 0.5. And now when we save and refresh, let's see what we get. Now let's check that out one more time. And what you might notice is that the emojis, they are being staggered. However, everything, both parent and child emojis, are kind of being faded in at the same time. But we can easily create some separation between the animation of the background gray box and the emojis by using another property in the transition object, and this property is called when. Now, by default, the animation of the parent and the child elements, they're all going to be kicked off at the same time. However, when using the when property, we can set it to before children, 
And now when we save and refresh, you're going to see that the background box fades in first, and then all the child emojis are going to do their stagger animation. So let's check that out. And I kind of made the duration on the parent element painfully slow on purpose just for the demonstration, but let's speed it up a little bit and let's set it to a duration of one second and let's speed up the staggering of the children a little bit to 300 milliseconds. And it looks like this. So this is the idea of variant orchestration where we have the parent element driving the state of the variant. And because the child elements have corresponding label names, they can be synchronized in a way with the parent variants. The other thing I want to tell you is that you don't necessarily have to assign the child elements to their own unique set of variants like we're doing here. For example, I could have set variants on the child elements to correspond to the same variance object, this one, that the parent is using. And as you can see, because we still have that parent-child relationship, staggered children is working as before. However, by using a separate set of variants, which here we're calling child variants, we're able to specify unique animations for the child elements. So like for the child variants, let's say that we wanted to do a little animation along the y-axis, where in the initial hidden state, we set y to be, well, let's say 100 pixels down, and then we animated to a y value of zero. So that would look like this. So you can see for the background, we have the simple fade in opacity, but for the child emojis, we have the opacity fade in as well as the Y axis transformation. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.